Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 7th of September and we are going to deal with two very important topics which are in news. The first is Africa can make India's critical mission shine. First of all, we should know what are critical minerals mission. Critical minerals mission is basically uh, a mission launched by the government of India where the government of India is wanting to promote the production or I would say the mining of critical minerals. What are critical minerals? These critical minerals are very much critical for the socio and economic well-being of the country in the 21st century. Like for example, lithium required for manufacturing batteries, cobalt required for manufacturing, I would say, uh, electronic equipments, rare earth elements required for manufacturing semiconductor chips. These are very much essential components or these are very much essential products of the 21st century. That is why they are categorized as critical minerals and Africa has a lot of reserves of critical minerals. That is why Africa is important. Second is bulldozer justice. The Supreme Court has expressed its dissatisfaction on the bulldozer justice which has become a practice which has been adopted by multiple state governments in the country. There have been laws, municipality laws, forest laws and all which the states have used as justification to demolish the properties of people who have been found as offenders. Supreme Court will soon rule out its own set of guidelines when to demolish, when not to demolish and the properties of all those who have been demolished are very hopeful that they will be compensated for that as well. Let's see what will be the new rules and regulations rolled out by the Supreme Court in this domain. Then we'll go to the MCQs as we do every day. Now Africa can make India's critical mission shine, critical minerals mission that is. So Nirmala Sitaraman has launched the critical mineral mission of India in 2024-25 budget. The aim is to promote domestic production of critical minerals, to promote recycling of these minerals and third is incentivize the acquisition of overseas assets. Overseas assets means there are multiple places all across the world where critical minerals are there and you know you can acquire those mines also and mine those critical minerals from there and bring them to India. Are these needed in India? Yes, they are very much needed in India. India wants to become Atma Nirbhar, so that is why this push is being made. Now examples of critical minerals. So first of all, we, we've understood what critical minerals are. These are very much critical for the socio-economic growth of the country in the 21st century. These are the minerals which are in demand in the 21st century and they will be in the demand in the 21st century. If it would have been in the 20th century, then at that time if this term critical mineral would have been coined, oil would have been one of the critical minerals because oil was very much critical for economic development at that time. But now as we are transitioning towards EVs and all, so you know these minerals are categorized as critical minerals. Let's see, lithium, it is one such element which is very much needed in uh, you know making rechargeable batteries and these rechargeable batteries will be used in electric vehicles, smartphones and laptops. So lithium is important. So India has discovered reserves of lithium in Jammu and Kashmir. There were already existing reserves in Karnataka also of lithium. But let's see when mining starts from these reserves. Next is cobalt essential for high performance batteries, especially lithium ion batteries and various industrial applications as well. Rare earth elements, a group of 17 elements including neodymium, dimium and dysprosium used in magnets, catalysts and various high tech applications. So rare earth elements and all semiconductor chips and all are also made from this graphite. It is used in batteries, lubricants and as a key component in fuel cells. Nickel, important for stainless steel production and electric vehicle batteries. Tantalum, used in electronics, particularly in capacitors and resistors. And vanadium, used in steel production to improve strength and durability. Remember that this list in the times to come can get altered. Some elements can be out of it, some elements can be added in this. This depends upon time to time and their applicability. Next is key initiatives taken by the government. 
to you know make this uh, initiative a successful one amendment of the mines and minerals development and regulation act 1957 allows private sector exploration of previously restricted minerals and many of these previously restricted minerals are categorized as critical minerals the mines and minerals development and regulation amendment bill 2023 was passed by the parliament on august 2 2023 that is last year's monsoon session establishment of khanij videsh india limited it is abbreviated as kabil aims to secure international mineral resources because one of the aims under india's critical mineral mission is incentivize overseas acquisition now expand domestic production first aim boost local extraction and processing capabilities for critical minerals prioritize recycling enhance efforts to recycle critical minerals to reduce dependency on new mining so let's suppose electronic equipments and all they are discarded e-waste is generated so from that e-waste whatever you know these kind of minerals can be extracted should be extracted so that you know our dependency solely on the new mining should reduce and we are able to produce this circular economy kind of thing that will actually help environment also to be sustainable so good that the government is thinking on these lines right from the very beginning prioritizing recycling incentivizing overseas acquisition khanij videsh india limited kabil has been you know established by the government for this purpose now africa's role in critical minerals so you can see you know multiple countries in africa possessing multiple critical minerals like for example Morocco is processing uh, possessing cobalt mali is having lithium ivory coast is having nickel ghana is having lithium congo is having copper cobalt and lithium tanzania is having graphite and nickel likewise these are some of the minerals which are categorized as critical minerals over here in africa and africa can definitely help in this mineral reserves africa holds 30 percent of the world's known critical mineral reserves making it a crucial partner in india's mineral supply chain historical and economic ties india has deep political economic and historical connections with africa supported by a significant indian diaspora also and ex india's expanding diplomatic significance obviously last year g20 summit african union's inclusion as a permanent member of g20 done by india apart from it you know bilateral engagements with many countries in africa of india is immense during covid and after that vaccine diplomacy definitely played a very crucial role in africa so whatever africa has africa is ready to offer it to india as well bilateral trade in 2022-23 india africa bilateral trade was 98 billion dollars and just look at this figure out of 98 billion dollars 43 billion dollars attributed to mining and minerals trade investment in energy supply india has invested 75 billion dollars in africa including in energy assets africa provides about 15 percent of india's total oil demand and increasing amounts of natural gas and minerals they are being increased from africa the la largest is russia 40 percent 39.9 percent we saw it day before yesterday or a few days ago when we were talking about russian oil imports to india international solar alliance india has allocated two billion dollar for solar projects in africa further strengthening ties with africa there are multiple sunshine countries in africa so the uh, tropic of uh, cancer equator and all they pass through africa so it is like this african policy initiatives africa is diversifying from a pit to port pit to port means earlier africa was considered as a pit only means people used to mine and take the resources from there and do processing and all in their respective countries leaving uh, africa with less benefits now some countries like tanzania and all they have realized this that after mining process it processed good if you export you will gain more value on that because by processing you are adding value to it so countries like tanzania zimbabwe namibia and ghana started pursuing policies for mineral processing and value addition so that is why pit to port transition is happening challenges and opportunities the first challenge is china's influence china has recently conducted uh, a summit with africa which we will be covering on monday and china has pledged to invest 50 billion dollars in africa 
So China's control over the mineral value chain possess economic and security risks for India. Beijing's significant presence in cobalt mining and its seven billion dollar minerals for infrastructure deal highlight the need for alternative partnerships. So China is also, you know, on the rise over there, trying to increase its influence in Africa. Strategic collaboration, infrastructure development, building mining adjacent infrastructure and identifying strategic projects with host countries are crucial for mutual benefit. We are seeing or looking at these as opportunities to counter China's influence, which is a challenge for us. Responsible practices, India's missions should focus on responsible mining practices to align with Africa's priority of value addition. So they basically we should understand what they are wanting and accordingly are you know, tasks should be. Indian advantages, construction projects. Indian firms have completed numerous infrastructure projects over there across the entire continent, including transmission lines, hospitals and railways. And in the times to come, we will see more such kind of projects coming up. Technical cooperation. India has signed MOUs with Zambia and Zimbabwe for geological mapping and capacity building. And the Indian technical and economic cooperation has gained 40,000 Africans in 10 years. Uh, uh, trained, we have we've trained this much Africans as well. Technology startups, Indian technology companies offer innovative solutions for mining exploration, extraction and ore benef beneficiation, presenting value added opportunities for African governments. So actually may we are trying to benefit the Africans. Our main focus is not extraction of their resources, exploit their resources and exploit them. Main focus is to develop their capacities. If we know, we, we want the resources, no doubt about this fact. But if we take the resources in such a way that we are developing their capacities also, our partnership with them will be sustainable, long lasting and of a lot of trust will be there. That is what Indian brand of diplomacy or Indian brand of trust building is like. Next is bulldozer justice. The Supreme Court, this matter has been there in the Supreme Court. Multiple people have filed petitions since 2022 that, you know, the governments, specifically the state governments, they, you know, indulge into uh, this kind of, uh, you know, bulldozer raising and all. If, uh, you know, uh, we are found, if, if, if someone is found in uh, any, any crime or something like this, so their properties are attacked. So Supreme Court has taken cognizance of this and said that we will soon rule out uh, a set of guidelines that under what circumstances bulldozer can be used for delivering justice. Bulldozer can be used for delivering justice is not literal sense, don't take it in literal sense. But yes, bulldozer can be used to do demolitions and all. So let us see, there are basically multiple laws in various states like for example Rajasthan. Now the state governments also, the state governments only do that. So there are multiple laws which the state government highlights ki bhaiya, according to the law we are doing this. So recent incident on August 17, the Udaipur Municipal Corporation demolished a house allegedly encroaching on the forest land. Relevant laws which it highlighted, Rajasthan Municipal Act 2009, Section 245 addresses encroachments on public land, stipulating imprisonment and fines. Property can be confiscated, but the offender must be served a notice and given an opportunity to respond to that notice. Rajasthan Forest Act 1953, Section 91, only a tehsildar can order eviction and seizure of land if occupied illegally. So, these are the two laws which Rajasthan had showcased in the recent incident. Next is Madhya Pradesh. A recent incident over there in Madhya Pradesh. In June, the administration demolished a part of laborer's house following allegations against his son, reportedly without serving prior notice. Without serving prior notice, this happened. And this was uh, basically a laborer's house. So just imagine, you know, these people or anyone for that matter invests a lot of money and the lifetime savings are gone in building up a house and this happens to them. That obviously is hurtful. Madhya Pradesh Municipalities Act 1961. Section 187 allows demolition of buildings constructed without permission but requires notice to the owner and an opportunity to show cause. This is the law over there. Uttar Pradesh, recent incident. The Uttar Pradesh though is known for bulldozer justice. In fact, uh, you know, the chief minister is very well known for his, uh, you know, 
image and people do refer to him as bulldozer baba also but anyways recent incident supreme court reviewed demolitions in uttar pradesh following violent protests in june 2022 relevant law uttar pradesh urban planning and development act of 1973 section 27 governs demolitions for unauthorized development requiring a notice period of 15 to 40 days decisions on appeals are final and cannot be questioned in court so it is as simple as that delhi now in delhi also this kind of laws are there and you know demolitions and all have happened following communal violence in jahangir puri this happened in april 2022 the north delhi municipal corporation conducted a demolition drive targeting alleged illegal encroachments relevant law delhi municipal corporation act of 1957 sections 321 322 permit removal of unauthorized structures or items without prior notice Section 343 allows demolition of an unauthorized buildings or work with a 5 to 15 day notice period. So notice period is mandatory, and provisions for appeals before an appellate tribunal. So it is unlike UP's law where you cannot, you know, appeal against the final order. Here you can appeal against the final order. Haryana, though there was this communal violence in this new district of Haryana last year. So after communal violence in August 2023. Haryana authorities demolished 443 structures affecting both Muslims and Hindus relevant law Haryana Municipal Corporation Act of 1994 section 261 similar to Delhi's provisions but with a shorter notice period of 3 days in Delhi there is this 5 to 15 day notice which we saw in the previous slide here it is 3 days notice affected parties can appeal before the district judge so appealing is also allowed now analysis and observation of this see due process concerns due process of the law gets compromised it is not i would say uh, justifiable too much that you know you demolish the property you talk to them you find out ways then the last resort should be demolishing a property obviously that is wrong that property if it is constructed on encroached land or something like this that should be dealt with but yes uh you know there should be ways of dealing with it so due process concerns the supreme court's focus highlights critical need for adherence to legal procedures before executing demolitions the court's future guidelines will aim at standardizing and ensuring fairness in such actions so guidelines are definitely needed variability across sectors uh, across states local laws governing demolitions vary significantly like we saw in some states uh, like up you are not allowed to appeal in some states notice period is less some states notice period is more so there is variability so local laws governing demolitions vary significantly with differences in notice periods grounds for demolition and appeal processes this variability can lead to inconsistencies and potential abuses of power which it has led to and human rights implications arbitrary demolitions especially in response to criminal accusations or communal tensions raise serious human rights and those need to be upheld by the courts that is why the supreme court has stepped in now coming to the mcqs which of the following can be categorized as a critical mineral in india petroleum coal titanium or graphite out of these you have to identify which of the following are objectives of india's critical mineral mission prioritize recycling first second is incentivize overseas acquisition only one only two both one and two neither one on two which country in africa is known for cobalt mining carefully answer this answer lies in the map morocco ivory coast mali or both a and c and last question is consider the following statements and mark the correct one india's import of minerals from africa is more than half of the total trade with africa african countries are also looking to adopt practices beyond mining that is processing of mined minerals etc so which of these statements is are correct you have to answer now the answers to yesterday's uh, mcqs that is 6th of september first question consider the following statements with respect to act east policy and mark the correct one so main thing is act east policy act east policy is about integrating with asean countries east asian countries and australia new zealand economically culturally and strategically So the statement is act east policy aims at integrating culturally with asean countries this is correct i have not said culturally only 
it is cultural integration with ASEAN countries, yes. So, and, and not only with ASEAN countries, I have not mentioned it. So, it is statement is correct. It was launched in 2014, yes. It was launched in 2014, the correct answer is C for this. Both statements are correct. Second statement, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. First is, India and Singapore upgraded their partnership to strategic partnership in 2018. No, it was 2015 and now it has been upgraded to comprehensive strategic partnership in 2024. The 2024 visit by the Indian PM established a comprehensive strategic partnership between India and Singapore. This statement is correct. This statement is wrong. So B is going to be the correct answer for this particular question. Third, consider the following statements and mark how many of them are correct. The key word here is how many. Singapore manufactures 20% of the world's semiconductor chips. This is wrong. It is 10%. The cost of chip manufacturing in Singapore is on the rise. Yes, that is why Singapore is looking for alternate locations like India. And this is an opportunity for India. Singapore has a well-developed semiconductor chip ecosystem. Yes, 10% of the world's output comes from Singapore. And, and uh, its contribution in Singapore's GDP is somewhere around 8-9%. So that system is well established over there. So, two statements are correct. So, B is going to be the correct answer for this. Fourth question, consider these para statements and with respect to Prevention of Money Laundering Act and mark the correct ones. This law was passed in 2002. Yes, passed in 2002. Came into force in 2005. So, this statement is correct. Money laundering is a cognizable and non-available offence as per the law. Yes, 2019 amendment made it cognizable and non-available. That is true. The statement is also correct. Enforcement Directorate was established as per the law. No, it was not established. Enforcement Directorate was established in the year 1956. And see, when this law was passed, it was passed in 2002. So, it was already established before this law was passed. So, this statement is wrong. Ha! Huh. Enforcement Directorate has been made responsible for investigating into the cases with respect to money laundering under this law. So, only 1 and 2, this is the correct option for this particular question. And the last question, which of these comprise the twin conditions for bail under PMLA? The twin conditions. One condition is the arrested person is able to prove that he has not done money laundering. And second, he is able to convince the authorities that once he goes out, he will not be indulging into money laundering. These are the twin conditions for bail. First, the accused has to prove innocence. Yes. The prospect of not committing the crime again when out on bail? Yes. So, these are the two conditions. So, both 1 and 2 are the correct answers for this particular question. Now, with this, we come to an end of today's session. I will be seeing you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. Not saying it today. Namaste. Jai Hind. Take care.